Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Gulam Bahadur, consultant clinical andrologist. I'm going to talk to you today about retrograde ejaculation and newer clinical perspectives. Firstly, I'm going to define what retrograde is, ret retrograde ejaculation is. I'll give you a historical perspective which may actually be quite interesting just from the general point of view. I'm then going to talk about the causes of it and then talk about how to remedy it and that is uh, any treatment or repair that we may fo that may follow. So the first thing is that retrograde ejaculation is that it is ejaculation which does not follow the normal pathway of the semen being expelled through the urethra. It is in fact semen going into the bladder. And there are some very, very important reasons for this, but we'll visit that in a moment. Historically, there are two things that have happened uh, that, that are in the literature. One is called coitus sexonicus. It's a primitive form of um, of uh, contraception and that was to try and constrict the penis at the base and force the semen into the bladder. Well, as you can imagine, that there must have been a lot of failures along that line. But just constricting the penis also causes physical damage to the bladder neck and it also causes damage to the cavernosal muscles. So this is quite important. The next area is one of Taoism, where monks actually utilize some form of control as to not ejaculate, but to force the ejaculate upwards. And that it, the idea was that it would make you cleverer and it will conserve the energy. But unfortunately, in order to do that, they needed pressure on the peritoneum. And I can imagine that this must have been uh, not a very good way forward and there's nothing that can be established with that either and all I could see is that uh, sometimes I'm ske skeptical about these sort of approaches uh, which may uh, claim to do something but in fact there's never ever any evidence historically that something positive has happened. Then people lean on Ayurvedic medicine and yoga, but again, I'm open to it, provided there's evidence to, to show me that there's something really has happened. And unfortunately, to date, there's nothing, no evidence that has come through. So let's talk about the causes of uh, it. And I think um, uh, the first and foremost is to talk about the nerve muscle control around the bladder neck. The next one is diabetes and multiple sclerosis are uh, other areas. The use of drugs like antidepressants and um, alpha blockers uh, to treat high blood pressure. Uh, there you can also, it can also happen surgically if you uh, have a surgery near the bladder neck, especially the retroperitoneal lymph node dissection. If that were to go slightly wrong, obviously, then you will have retrograde ejaculation. Now, quite often, it is loosely termed as damage to the bladder neck. Now, the word damage means that there is something physical that has happened. But if you look along all the lines, it has nothing to do with any permanent damage as opposed to nerve control. And I think this is the point that I want to try and force through, is that it is the nerve control. Retrograde ejaculation has also been loosely termed as dry, eja uh, dry orgasm. And I think that word too is a bit difficult to accept for some patients who actually go through it because the word orgasm is a very global term uh, and it does not have the same meaning as, uh, as an ordinary orgasm. So this is only retrograde ejaculation. So a man having a so-called dry orgasm would not have the orgasm of that he may have the sensation in the glands penis for instance so we need to dispel this idea that it's dry orgasm and in terms of damage you know people often in clinics say well doctor 
how does it happen? And they may loosely use the word that infection damage might have occurred and very rarely some doctors prescribe antibiotics. And this is not the right way around either because there's no evidence in literature that it has ever to do with uh, a, a micro with with, with um, infectious uh, damage. And so we're now left with effectively a very a problem that relates to the nerve and during erection the the nerves are, that are uh, the direction of instructions are coming from the S2 S4 uh, uh, region and and that is where the erection issues and the ejaculatory issues come through so how do we repair how is there any mechanism that we might be able to repair uh, retrograde ejaculation. Well, apparently, drugs uh, like pseudoephedrine, pseudofed, uh, imipramine have been utilized to, uh, uh, as a short measure to try and see if reversal can occur. Surgically, also, uh, there's been bladder neck uh, uh, reconstruction around the muscle of that area. Uh, using a VY um, plasty of the bladder neck. So those are just some of the ideas that uh, uh, that emerge while we uh, talk about uh, something like uh, retrograde ejaculation. And unfortunately, for the, when a patient has retrograde ejaculation, there are issues there as to how you're going to manage the sperm. And for the purpose of fertility treatment remember it doesn't occur much but it's an in less it's around one percent of all patients there will be retrograde ejaculation and for this in order to manage the patients you do need to begin by giving uh, baking soda bicarbonate the night before and then follow this up just before you attempt to obtain the retrograde ejaculate and um, following on from there the whole idea is that you're going to try and neutralize the pH of the urine uh, and hope that uh, there'll be enough sperm there. Now the beauty about treating their partners is that their partner has rarely a problem and so you could actually uh, re recoup enough motile sperm through the urine if it's well managed and perform intrauterine insemination a timed intrauterine insemination to achieve your pregnancy. Now that's all what I have to tell you today about retrograde ejaculation. I hope that if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you again sometime. Thank you.